Last month marked the 40th anniversary of the Dunstow Strikes, a nationwide campaign in Ireland instigated by 21-year-old Mary Manning, a shop worker who refused to handle two South African grapefruit as per a directive issued by her trade union. This campaign ignited a movement that would undermine the apartheid regime and gain the support of Nelson Mandela and Archbishop Desmond Tutu. Their campaign gained widespread support from across the British and Irish trade union movement, including from Britain's National Union of Mine Workers, who were engaged in their own struggle against Thatcher's attempts to close the pits. The Dunstow strikes culminated in a nationwide ban of South African produce in 1987, making the Irish government the first government in the West to impose such a ban. From the actions of one 21-year-old trade unionist grew a movement that would change government policy and bring the South African apartheid regime to its knees. Forty years later, the world is bearing witness to the horrors of apartheid once again. The Lancet estimates that 186,000 people have lost their lives in Israel's genocidal war in Gaza. Just as it did in 1984, our movement must develop an industrial strategy to respond to the scenes we are witnessing in Gaza. At the Stand Comedy Club in Glasgow, Unite Hospitality members have refused to handle items listed on the Boycott, Divestment and Sanctions website. These include Pepsi and Israeli Fresh Lemons and Limes. This comes as part of Unite Hospitality's Serve Solidarity campaign, a campaign aimed at developing worker-led boycotts of BDS-listed items in the hospitality sector. The occupation is dependent on finance from consumers in the West. We have marched for months and lobbied our governments for close to a year to end the genocide in Gaza. It is essential that, just as Mary Manning did, we elevate this struggle and take it into our workplaces, the primary arena of social and political struggle.